Hey guys, Brian here. I'm in a very, very, very empty Orlando airport. Uh, why am I in Orlando? Um, maybe because we're buying a new rig here and then I'm driving it 1,700 miles all the way back to Colorado. <laughs> uh, it's been a long day. I've had three flights. My original flight was supposed to be one long flight from Denver straight to Orlando, but I ended up having to go from Colorado Springs Airport to Dallas to Miami now to Orlando. Uh, so my schedule has gotten thrown awry, but I'm here and I'm waiting for my special guest to pick me up. And uh, he should be here any minute now, so we'll see who it is. <laughs> who is that? Howdy, howdy everyone. It's Matt. What's going on? <laughs> So air travel is really weird right now. It is currently April 14th. All I did three flights today to get from Colorado Springs down here to uh, Ocala in kind of central Florida. And all three flights were very empty. And this is right in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic issue that is kind of plaguing kind of all sectors of this country and the world. And um, I know that uh, some of you might be like, why were you out traveling? So as I said at the very beginning, we're down here to get our new RV. And uh, we consider this to be essential because the lease on our house is up very soon and we're going to be moving into the RV. So this is kind of, uh, we need to get this RV and we need to get it back to Colorado so we can move out of that house in uh, about two months. So this is kind of essential for us. So we felt that now is the right time before everything else shuts down or before anything gets worse or before traveling becomes even more difficult. Um, even with this little flight path that I had here, there were two cancellations that changed all of my stuff between uh, last Friday and today. So stuff's pretty crazy out there. My first flight from Colorado Springs to Dallas had 11 people on it. Everybody had their own row and like empty rows between everybody else. Uh, the second flight was a big 777 from Dallas to Miami. There were maybe 20 people on that flight. So there were just completely empty rows, completely empty sections. Uh, it was a lot of space in a very big plane. Uh, and then the final one, there were five civilians, I think, and then a whole bunch of flight attendants and pilots and co-pilots like air crew moving from one airport to another because all of these other flights have been canceled. Uh, I've looked at the boards in Miami and I think maybe, I would guess probably 80 to 85% of those flights had been canceled. It's crazy, it's so weird. And um, kind of in a good way, it actually helped a lot with my flight anxiety. Um, I don't fly very often, and when I do, it tends to freak me out a lot, but I've actually been pretty chill today because there haven't been people rushing around. There's really been no, like, crushing, pressing, you know, can I get through security in time, or do I have to get to the airport two hours ahead of time? There was none of that. It was all, like, when I went through security in Colorado Springs, I was the only person in sight other than TSA agents. Took my time, you know, take shoes off, belt get stuff out of bags, laptop on its own, you know, all of that crap, got it through scanning. And then on the other side, I had time to put my shoes back on and my belt and all that. And then on the flights themselves, you know, I'm kind of broad shoulder, like you can see me in this chair right here. Uh, when I'm in those little, you know, economy class seats, I go sideways out of my seats. So not having to cram in next to people and, you know, like sit sideways and lean against the wall or any of that, not having to do that, totally great 
helped a lot with you know the anxiety of you know like who am I going to be next to am I going to be in their way are they going to be in my way any of that none of that so that was kind of nice and third strangely enough knowing this morning when I got up that I had three different flights to go on kind of forced me to be okay with it because I couldn't just kind of freak out about the first one taking off and landing because I'd have to do it two more times after that so I just kind of resigned myself to the fact that hey you're flying and you have to fly to get to where you're going and it's going to be okay you know and it was <laughs> so those were all three pretty good flights so now that I'm finally here, uh, as you saw way back at the beginning of this video, uh, Matt from Matt's RV Reviews picked me up at the airport uh, and then drove me out here to Ocala. And I am across the street from General RV Center here in Ocala. And uh, Matt found us a pretty good RV. Uh, so there's a really good chance I'm going to be um, becoming the new owner of it tomorrow. And then I have to drive it all the way back to Colorado. <laughs> that is 1,700 plus-ish miles. That's a really long way. I'm down here by myself. Uh, obviously, Aaron's back home with the kids. And uh, this is, we, we would have loved to have all come down and then maybe travel back in it, or I would have loved to at least bring Tara down with me. But with the, you know, with the, the flights the way they are and having to wear masks and you know not not wanting her I just didn't want her to get sick I wanted this to be as minimal as possible uh, I was super super careful when I was in the airports so I always had mask on pretty much everybody else had masks on I was constantly washing my hands I had hand sanitizer with me I had wipes with me to wipe down everything before I touched it and after I touched it uh, so it was very very cognizant of touching everything not touching my face being clean, being kind of away from people. Um, and I, I think I think I did pretty good. I think I did pretty good. Um, it was also kind of interesting to see how people in different areas were kind of treating what was going on uh, in Texas, in Dallas, Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. There were a lot of people that didn't have masks on and weren't really worried about, you know, kind of getting that six foot personal space in between each other. Uh, but once I got down here to Florida, everybody had masks on in both airports both down in miami and in orlando uh masks everywhere people you know in their little groups being away from other people especially on that little train thing you have to take to get from you know the terminals back to the front gate uh so really interesting to see kind of this different the way that different people in the country are treating all of this um this is obviously a very small sample size because there were not a lot of people in these airports um it was really nice to walk through airports that were basically empty. It was like one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning all day long. And all of the shops were closed. Um, I think uh, nothing was open in Colorado Springs because it was five o'clock in the morning. Uh, then in Dallas, uh, the only thing that was open that was anywhere near my gate was a McDonald's with awful coffee. Uh, so I didn't have any caffeine today, which is I'm surprised I'm still awake. And uh, then in Miami, there were four restaurants open, not a single store was open. And then in Orlando, I wasn't really paying attention to the stores and stuff, but there were all the gates were down. There was nobody there. Uh, there were way more employees at all these airports than passengers walking around. So all in all, very, very strange. Um, if you have to fly somewhere, I feel like it's pretty safe. You know, they are wiping everything down. There are cleaning people all over the place, all over the time, and the passengers that are there are pretty much staying apart from each other. So if you absolutely have to fly somewhere and you feel that it is safe, I don't think it's that bad of an idea, uh, but with how many flights have been canceled and even the, the latest cancellation that happened to me happened within, I think, 18 hours of when I was supposed to take off. So that kind of threw a wrench and everything. So getting flights is becoming more and more difficult. So hopefully this doesn't go on for too much longer, uh, but we also don't want to get everybody back together in those big groups too soon because that would just make everything spread that much faster and that could be a very bad thing. So that's my quick take on uh, what traveling right now is like. Uh, hopefully it helps you make a decision to either stay home, which you probably should, or if you absolutely have to fly, it at least gives you a little bit of a snapshot of what's going on out there. In our next video, you're going to see our new RV. Bye guys.